This video is about creating and installing indexes in Fourscore. But first, note that you're looking at my Fourscore screen right now, but it's in horizontal orientation, landscape orientation. That's not the way I use Fourscore, but for the purpose of this video, I've got it in that configuration because chances are that you're looking at this tutorial on a computer in which case you are limited to landscape orientation. On the other hand, if you are looking at an iPad or an iPhone, then simply rotate your device until it is in landscape orientation so that you will come close to filling the screen with my video. So what is an index and what is it for? Most of the scores I have in Fourscore are individual pieces. If I take a look at my my menu here, you can see these are all by Arcadel. And by the way, I name my pieces beginning with the composer's name because for my purposes that uh, works better than just having the title of the piece. But that is just my personal convention. So all these pieces are obviously by Arcadel. And then you see the title after that. Uh, you, of course, may not be following that convention. But anyway, each of these is an individual piece. I click on that one, we come to that piece. And I click on that one, we come to that piece, etc. But you might also have a collection of pieces, such as this. And this has a bunch of pieces, and it has 20 individual pieces. Now, I cannot search in Fourscore for any of these pieces because they're all within this collection. So if I were to try to use the search function to find one of these pieces, I would not be able to because they're not individually listed. And that is what an index will create. An index will make it possible to search for any of these individual pieces, and it'll also allow you to see all of these individual pieces in the menu of pieces. So to do that, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a spreadsheet program, and I will use Dropbox to transfer from the spreadsheet into Fourscore. So the first step is we want to open up a spreadsheet. I'm going to use Excel. And here is a list in Excel of all the pieces that you just saw. So if we take a look at this, you can see that these are all these pieces and I have listed them in my convention of starting with the, the title starts with the composer's name, space, hyphen, space, and the title. Uh, but of course, that may not be your convention. So then the next thing you need to do is you need to list the starting page and the ending page. We've got page one and page two, page five, etc. So page one, page two, page five, uh, and then the ending page. So the one that started on page one is just one page long. And we can go and take a look at that in here. So here's that first piece. And again, I'm in landscape format, so it's going to do this. You can see this is a double bar. Oops, you can't see that. See, there's a double bar at the end of that. So that's the end of that page. The second piece starts there on the next page. But we can also see that back here in the table of contents. If, of course, you don't have a table of contents, you need to go through individually and uh, determine each piece. So we have the starting page and the ending page for each piece. And then I've got the composer. And again, my convention is to list a composer and the composer's dates. Uh, I also list the number of, of instruments for each piece. Uh, that, of course, is part of my convention. You may not be doing that. And I also list the genre. All of these are Renaissance pieces. Sometimes I'll be more specific than that. I might list it as a madrigal or a motet in addition to being Renaissance, in which case it would be Renaissance, comma, madrigal, or comma, motet, or whatever it may be. But anyway, your convention may be different from that. That is the way I do it. So these are the pieces of information I want to be able to import into my index. The title, start page, end page, composer, instruments, and genre. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a save as because uh, it's already in there, actually. So I'm going to save it into Dropbox, and I have a, a 
folder in Dropbox for Fourscore. I'm going to save it in there. And I'm going to save it as a CSV file, a common delimited file, because that's the file format that Fourscore requires. And uh, this one I'm going to call Maximilian Volume 1 Index.csv. And um, put that right in here. And of course, I already have it because I've done this before. But I'm going to just click on that to save it. Click Save. And yes, I want to overwrite it. And now it's going to ask whether I want to be sure to save it as a common delimited file. Yes, indeed I do. So I can click yes to that. And that's everything we do in Excel. So then we go back to Fourscore. And now I'm going to tap in the center of the screen and click on the toolbox in the upper right corner and go to Services. And in services, I'm already in Dropbox and Fourscore. I'm going to back up so you can see. Uh, I want to be sure I'm in Dropbox. And then I'm going to go into my Fourscore folder. And in there, I can see the files that I've got. And the one I want to import is the Maximilian Volume 1 Index. I just tap on that. And of course, it is a duplicate. Uh, and I'm going to overwrite it. Um, you probably don't have to do that because it's going to be new for you. And that's all I need to do. Now, if I had multiple ones that I wanted to import, I could tap on all the ones. For example, if I want this, this collection actually has four volumes, uh, and I have indexes for all four of them, I could tap on each of those right now to import all of those. But I am done right now because I'm just doing the first one. And now I'm in, I'm in this collection, the Maximilian Volume 1 collection. And it doesn't matter what page I'm on. So I'll just, uh, for convenience sake, go back to the title page. And now I'm going to click on the bookmark icon in the upper left. It looks like a pages of a book. And in here, I'm going to click on the left side on indexes. And that will show all of the index files, the CSV files I've got available. And so I want to find the one for this particular volume, which is Maximilian Volume 1 Index. Click on that. Now, I need to tell Fourscore which spreadsheet column belongs in what category. So I'm going to tap on the first one, which I know is the title. And I'm going to say that is the title. The second one I know is the starting page. So then I'm going to click Starting Page. Third one I know is ending page, so I'm going to click on ending page. The next one is composer, so I will click on composers. The next one is the number of instruments, so I'm going to click on instruments. Notice that this is not following the same format. It's not following the same order here as I put it in. It depends on what order you put your columns in in the spreadsheet. But as long as you know which is which, you're good to go. So I'm going to go instruments. And then Renaissance, of course, is genre. First, I probably should have said you want to skip the header row in the spreadsheet because remember my spreadsheet, let's go back to that for a moment, had a header row saying title, start page, end page, composer, etc. That is the header row. So down here, Toward the bottom, we want to say skip header rows and as one row. So we make sure that's on one down at the bottom there. But the next thing is notice that it is showing title page of the collection, and that is not the first piece. So now we want to go down to page number offset at the very bottom and click once, and that takes us to that page. And you can see that you know, it's showing us what it will be. And that one, no, that's not it. There, that's the first page of score. So that's the one that we want. And that, of course, will, de will depend on how many pages there are in the collection before you actually get to the scores. So you simply need to uh, adjust that page number offset until you see the first score showing there. And then I'm going to click on the upper right corner, Save. And now you can take a look at the bookmarks 
shows all of these pieces. So if I, for example, click on this Senful Carmen, it takes me to that piece. Go back up to bookmarks, and if I click on this one, it takes me to that piece. Now all of these pieces will show individually in my list of music. So for example, let's say I want to search for this uh, this last one here, R-E-N-E-R. -E -E so I'm going to go to the note there and find composer starting with an R. I'll back up to composers and R, E-N-E-R, -E and there it is. All right, that's indexes. I hope that has been useful.